Since the Beyond Light Super rework in Update 3.4.0, the PvE super farming meta has shifted away from maximizing intellect and towards ability kills using mods like Ashes to Assets and Hands On. However, another super source was introduced during that update, one that went unnoticed by many, dealing and receiving damage. While this was certainly a nice super boost just for playing the game normally, it was more of a supplement rather than a primary option of getting your super in most cases. However, this mechanic has received some newfound attention from the Destiny community thanks to a recent update. In Update 8.1.5, roaming supers were buffed to receive around triple the super energy from active damage sources, which has led to plenty of clips of people farming multiple golden guns and burning malls in a single damage phase. Since this mechanic now shows enough promise to potentially make super spam a viable damage strategy, or at least more endgame viable in general, it began to raise a lot of questions in my mind. How does a damage to super energy conversion work? Is it per instance, or raw damage, or a mix of both? Does the type of damage matter? And most importantly, what's the best way to farm your super using this mechanic? What would follow became the most data-dense Destiny Science project I've ever worked on. But first, how do you actually measure super gains precisely enough to confidently answer any of these questions? Enter SuperTrack, the utility that led me down this investigative journey. Obviously, we can just measure how long every relevant damage source takes to fill our super bar, and that would have been a relatively straightforward video, but that isn't enough information to test precise inquiries. What if there was a way to track how much super we gain over time in the same way Destiny Damage Tracker monitors the depletion of a boss health bar? Well, this is the question answered by SuperTrack, a Python utility powered by Mossinator, developed by Harm and Mossy Max, two members of the Destiny Science community I'm sure you're familiar with through their work on D2 Foundry and the outgoing damage spreadsheet, respectively. Since the HUD in Destiny is slightly curved, Mossinator straightens it out so that tools like SuperTrack can measure meters more accurately. But how accurately? When Harm first reached out to me and told me about SuperTrack, I wasn't expecting anything too crazy since the super bar is significantly less fidelitous than the health bar of a raid boss. Thankfully, I was pleasantly surprised with what SuperTrack is capable of. While I did need to prune some measurement errors as you can see here, the data is impressively detailed, recording precise changes at 60 frames per second. However, it wasn't long before I encountered the investigation's first obstacle. Even over short periods, you are gaining super passively through your intellect stat. So how do we eliminate this variable and isolate just the active gains being tested? Simple. I took a control test over a minute of passive super gains in a dark environment using storm trance at tier 3 intellect, and then I subtracted these values whenever I measured an active super source. This then set the precedent for every test to come, which were all performed using these same 270% tier supers as shown here at tier 3 intellect. Using this intellect adjusted data, we can now continue our investigation. Let's start by figuring out the fundamentals of the active super gain mechanic. First, does high raw damage translate directly to supercharge? For instance, does a honed Izanagi's burden shot give you a proportionally big chunk of super given its high per shot damage? The answer is no. If we take every damage source tested and divide the damage done by the amount of super gained, the efficiency of each damage source varies wildly, from 0.03% to 2.6% super gained per 10,000 damage done. Okay, then is it based on fire rate? Do high RPM weapons like trace rifles and machine guns generate super energy proportionally faster than, say, shotguns and snipers? The answer is, again, not quite. While weapons with high fire rate did tend to perform better overall on this list, the previously mentioned damage to super efficiency value still disproportionately varies when looking at similar top RPM contenders, like SMGs, LMGs, traces, and auto rifles. So how does this mechanic actually work? Well, it seems like the damage per instance that can actually contribute to your super has a hard limit, as evidenced by multiple examples of different amounts of damage per shot resulting in the same amount of super generated. In theory, if the cap is the same on every weapon, that would mean that weapons with high RPM should be the best. However, there's a reason Sweet Business isn't taking over the game's super generation meta. Not only does this damage cap vary by weapon type, but it's also high enough that it can be punishing for weapons that trade high fire rates for low per instance damage. So what is the instance cap for each weapon type, and how would we even find something like that? Well, it's actually fairly straightforward. First, I try to find a clean segment of a damage source's plot. Second, I look for a large enough number of shots to get a good average, maybe around 10 or so. And finally, I take the super generated during that period and divide it by the number of shots to get the average amount of super energy that is converted per shot. If we sort all of our results by super per shot, we see some interesting trends arise. 
For example, Fang of Ear U with Precision Instrument, Surges, Lumina, Tractor, and the Sanguine Mark Boost does around 9300 damage per shot, and each of its shots give just as much super energy as a final round touch of Malice with Surges, Lumina, and Tractor, which does almost 16,000 damage. Two weapons with a near 70% difference in damage per shot, and yet each of their shots gives the same amount of super. That's how you know we're at the cap. Let's take a look at all the individual weapon families here. As you can see, every weapon family from sidearm to linear has a clear cutoff in the tick column where more damage stops mattering, intentionally discovered through repeated testing of different members of every weapon family with increasing damage values. Based on these results, we can ascertain a couple things. First, the average special or power weapon has a much harder time with super generation than the average primary weapon, looking at both efficiency and instance caps. This is made especially obvious by weapon families with members in both primary and special variants. Choir of One's hitscan mode, for example, has an instance cap that is around 47% of an equivalent primary auto. In fact, the top 7 instance caps of every weapon family were all primaries, with the 8th highest cap belonging to the rocket launcher, which obviously fires much more slowly compared to any primary. Specials and heavies are treated the same though, as we can see from Ergo Sum having the same cap as a heavy sword like Bequest. Second, it doesn't seem like alternate firing modes on certain exotic primaries like Revision Zero can bypass the cap. Despite doing 130,975 damage per shot in the sniper mode test, Revision Zero generated exactly the same amount of super when doing 8,711 damage per shot in its regular tubers mode. Third, it seems like the caps that Bungie set for each weapon family do follow some sort of logical order in accordance with weapon fire rate, but not exactly. For example, bows have the highest instance cap at just over 2% super per shot, which makes sense given their slow fire rate. After that, we have scouts at 1.6%, hand cannons and sidearms at around 1.48%, pulses at 1.37%, SMGs at 1.15%, and autos at 1.14%. In theory, hand cannons and autos should give more super energy given that they have slower fire rates compared to other weapon families that have higher instance caps, but it's pretty accurate besides that. Below primaries, we have rockets at 1.13%, snipers and linears at around 0.92%, GLs at 0.9%, then LMGs, glaives, shotguns, and fusions at around 0.68%, swords at 0.58%, and finally, traces at 0.46%. You might be wondering about abilities. Using the highest per instance ability damage I could think of, death throws boosted lightning grenades, I discovered that ability damage is capped at around 0.53% per instance, which ranks second lowest of any damage source. Fourth, the archetype of a weapon doesn't seem to matter when it comes to instance caps, Slower firing auto rifles, for example, do not have a proportionally raised cap compared to faster firing auto rifles. This helps explain why higher RPM weapons tended to perform better in preliminary super generation testing, as they are not punished in any way when it comes to instance caps for having a higher fire rate compared to other options in the same weapon family. Fifth, the relationship between damage dealt and super gained under the instance cap for an individual weapon family appears to be linear. While I didn't test this extensively since a majority of my tests were dedicated to finding the exact cap itself, a relatively consistent efficiency value for typical weapon examples below the cap in families like the sidearm and auto rifle indicate that this is the case. Some weapons, especially those with multiple instances per shot, deviate from this expected efficiency value, but that is an unexpected behavior. This means that, for example, if you have two auto rifles with auto rifle A doing 2500 per shot and auto rifle B doing 5000, Auto Rifle B should net you 2 times the super per shot, since both values are under the cap. So I can find the per instance super energy cap pretty easily. That begs the question, how do I actually know what the per instance damage cap of a weapon family is? 5000 damage? 6000? For this, I used the tried and true method of repeatedly testing different weapons in a family until I confirmed I was above the cap, then doing tests below the cap to develop a linear approximation for the actual cap value. Basically, I kept testing a weapon family's different examples with different buffs until I found a hard cutoff in the tick column, which measures super gain per damage instance. As you can see with sidearms, the cutoff is around 1.47%. Then we take away buffs until we see an option that's significantly below 1.47%, like Rat King at 63.99 per shot with Lumina, 3 Surges, and a Sanguine Mark getting about 1.3% super per shot. Multiplying that value by the ratio between the cap and 1.3%, we get a sidearm instance cap of around 7275. Some of you might see where this is ultimately going. Repeating this method on every single weapon family, we can find the approximate damage required to get a super, as well as the theoretical time to get one using every weapon family. 
For primaries, we notice something interesting. Almost all the caps are somewhere between 6500 and 7500, with only autos and bows being outliers at 5598 and 7969 respectively. Bows are only an outlier because I literally couldn't get a reliable testing example that was low enough to find the true cap. And autos, well, I think they just have a mediocre damage profile for their fire rate, so maybe the cap was set lower for them compared to other primaries. Special weapons are even more precise. They all have caps that are within 100 damage of 7400, which is insanely precise given that our measurement tool of choice is literally counting pixels, which will inherently quantize our data. Power weapons are a little more variable with half the weapon family's missing caps because, for example, I cannot get a rocket's instance damage to go below 46187. But the ones where I could, it was a similar story, around 6 or 7,000 damage per instance. Finally, abilities appear to have a cap somewhere around 7 or 8,000. Most common damage abilities are tick damage that occurs over time, so that's good news for certain grenades that have lots of instances, as almost none of that damage will be wasted, but as we've established, abilities do have one of the worst per instance super energy caps, so their conversion rate is pretty awful. From this theoretical table, you can see that almost every primary requires around 490,000 damage or so to farm a super, with SMGs and bows sticking out as outliers at 650k and 390k respectively. Specials are either around 820k, GLs and snipers, or 1.1 million, everything else. While heavies don't really have any reliable values due to how skewed and difficult to obtain some of their caps are compared to typical damage instance examples for, say, a rocket. Anyways, down to brass tacks. Based on our information, the mathematically fastest super generator of any damage source given current RPM is going to be a lightweight SMG that does at least 7,439 damage per shot. If you know anything about boss damage reference numbers in Destiny, that is a lot of damage per shot. Even with Peacekeepers, it's going to be difficult for an SMG to hit these numbers. Risk Runner with Arc Conductor active, Lumina, Support Frame Boost, 3 Surges, Tractor, Arc Compounding, and Peacekeepers at max damage boost ends up at 7,832 damage, just barely scraping by the cap. This results in a theoretical time to super of 5.8 seconds, which makes sense given that my 5.2 second test killed a few harpies that happened to enter the tether we were using, along with some small passive intellect gains and incoming damage as well. As for the rest of the list, if we ever get a 900 RPM auto, that would do pretty well, but that 5598 damage requirement is pretty high in the same way the SMG requirement is. Sidearms and pulses are also fast charging performers, only really losing to SMGs because they can't reach 900 RPM. Now there's one thing I haven't accounted for. You might have noticed that I try very hard in this video to say instance cap rather than frame cap or shot cap. That's because every single damage number on your screen counts, regardless of if it was sourced from a single shot or not. While Destiny has trouble processing damage that occurs between frames, especially on low frame rates, if the number is on your screen and ticks are on your crosshair, it counts for super energy. Weapons like Vex Caliber and Trinity that have multiple split projectiles that hit at the same time, all of those instances count separately. Solar Grenade with Touch of Flame, every single glob counts individually. Pack Hunter Projectiles, Tommy's Matchbook Ignitions, Thunderlord Lightning Strikes, every single additional instance spawned by a special effect generates its own super energy. This is why, for example, Outbreak performs a little above its weight class even as a pulse rifle. Thanks to its occasionally swarming nanites, it gains an effective slight, I'm going to call it IPM or instance per minute advantage compared to other pulses. So to add on to our description of the optimal super farm candidate, we are looking for a primary with a high fire rate, decent instance cap, no reloading until a full super is obtained, and bonus instances on top to provide extra IPM beyond the RPM on the box. While I wasn't able to find anything that does this better than Risk Runner, a 900 RPM SMG that can hit its cap, this does have implications on the other conclusion of this investigation. Risk Runner farms up super crazy fast, but it has trouble reaching its cap like most primaries. Your average Destiny gameplay situation will not allow you to stack all the buffs, debuffs, and modifiers that we did in order to achieve this effect. As you can see in the proximity column, a value that divides the instance cap by base damage, lightweight SMGs require a near 5.4 times multiplier to hit their cap, a value that is inaccessible without peacekeepers and nigh impossible to achieve with your standard buffs and debuffs. So what's the best super generator for the average player? Well, the answer is probably what you'd expect. Outbreak. There's a reason it farms Transcendent so quickly, and that's because both active super generation and Transcendent gains share the same internal mechanics. While they are not one to one, any damage source you've learned today that farms super quickly will also farm Transcendence quickly. Because Outbreak has its own damage boost mechanic that scales very high, and because it doesn't have much trouble hitting the pulse cap, 
Without the use of surges, buffs, debuffs, or anything special, it gets my stamp of approval for easiest option. Some special shoutouts, both special GLs and heavy GLs share the same instance cap, so area denials like Lost Signal actually fare very well because of their high IPM as well as how low the GL cap actually is, at 7369 damage. Unsurprisingly, these tests also confirm what players have said for years about fusions, since they have a high instance count per shot, they are without a doubt the best legendary special for farming super directly. As for power weapons, none of them are particularly fantastic for super generation outside of high RPM machine guns, which are unfortunately not very viable for boss damage, and since they occupy your power slot, aren't very viable for super generation either, since most people aren't going to give up their heavy weapon slot just for a better super generator. Microcosm is the only weapon that is a little on the fence, but because the trace rifle per instant super cap is so low, it too struggles to break past the middle tier of super generators. Now that we've answered all the main questions of the investigation, I'll leave you with a couple miscellaneous finds I encountered or was asked to look at during my research. First, Agar Scepter now actually gains net super during will given form if you're using a 270% tier super and have some buffs, which is pretty nuts, it basically doesn't cost anything to use if you lead with it, and you can fire indefinitely with something like Facet of Command in your kit. There was a theory that the bonus damage from crits does not affect super generation. I tested and confirmed that this is not true by comparing the generation from 3779 damage body shots from Michael's Reverence with Frenzy, 3 Surges, and Tractor against the 3808 damage crits from the same sidearm with just Frenzy. The super generation of both tests was the exact same per instance, meaning that the number on screen is the number that matters for generation testing. Interestingly, this also applies to bosses like Riven, where your visual damage is doubled on her mouth hitbox despite doing equal damage to her health bar. The effective damage might have remained the same, but the super generation per instance doubles if you were under the cap post doubling. Next, someone asked me to test Threat of Generation to see if it was similar to super gains. From some brief and not super scientific testing, I found that not to be the case. Maybe the caps are different for that specific fragment because I was getting significantly different amounts of grenade energy per quarter of my super generated with both Risk Runner and Xenophage. Since I tested everything here at tier 3 intellect, what about tier 10? Did Bungie bake in a hidden boost to active super generation if you have more intellect? The answer is no. As you can see from this Vex Caliber test with tier 10 intellect, there is zero benefit besides the added passive generation you expect to get from increased intellect. And finally, we've spent this entire video talking about outgoing damage, but what about incoming damage? Is it significant at all? Unfortunately, the answer is also no. Sitting in Nessus Radiolarian Fluid with Tier 3 Intellect, Daybreak, and Zero Resilience, I was getting approximately 0.02% of my super per second, subtracting the passive gain from intellect out. This constant damage was enough to kill me in around 8 or 9 seconds without healing, and in my testing against various raid bosses, I never saw super gains that were significant enough to affect results. So it's definitely there, but it's not a lot. That pretty much wraps up all my findings. Originally, this was going to be a pretty short and sweet video talking about a couple options I tested, but it turned into this multi-week investigation where I did over 120 individual tests, exporting 60 values per second for every single one, resulting in the processing of nearly 135,000 cells of raw data. Hopefully this bettered your understanding of how active super generation works in Destiny, and every time we get a new weapon, we know what criteria to look for that might make it a good candidate for super farming. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a bit when we start doing dungeon breakdowns.